Pirates are one of the ultimate historical video game character types. Up there with the fantasy of being able to play as things like Vikings, cowboys, knights, samurais and ninjas. And when I say pirates, I mean a bit more yo-ho than I do Captain Philip. You know, that idea of sailing around the Caribbean, drinking rum, singing sea shanties and looking for buried treasure while looting and pillaging towns. And this fantasy is so well crafted in games such as Black Flag and Sea of Thieves. But sadly, I've been lacking a decent top-down pirate ship game for a while. A gap I was hoping that Port Royale 4 would somewhat fill, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping. You can get a link to that review in the description below. So when King of Seas came along, it presented me with an opportunity to not only talk about an interesting take on the pirate genre, but also to review a game. So here it is my five step review of King of Seas. And the five steps in this video will go like normal. First, what it is in a nutshell. What is King of Seas? Second, the story. Third, game mechanics. Fourth, the visuals and audio before finally summing it up in a conclusion. All of the chapter marks will be down so you can skip the video to which part you want to watch. And no, I won't be giving it a score because game review scores are often meaningless and based on a very broken concept of scale. But I hope you'll understand what I think of the game through what I say in the video and my conclusions. And by the way, if you want to see more reviews in the future or critiques and retrospectives, please give this video a like. So, step one. What is King of Seas? Quite simply put, it's an isometric pirate ARPG set in a procedurally generated version of the Caribbean. You sail from island to island sinking and plundering ships, trading between towns and carrying out side missions, all while following a main story. The game is pleasing on the eye and somewhat reminded me of Sid Meier's Pirates. And you spend the whole time on your ship, never leaving it to go on the land. There's multiple difficulties, satisfying combat and, and elements of magic included, which on the whole delivers a deeply satisfying and enjoyable experience. However, I have to say that it does have a few flaws that could have been avoided, but nothing game breaking. So that's what it is in a nutshell. Now step two, let's talk about that story. Now it's not exactly the deepest story I've ever played, but I don't want that to put anybody off because it works. You take control of either the heir or heiress to the King of Seas. Your time as heir or heiress apparent to your fall from grace to becoming a pirate is pretty speedy and takes the length of a brief but decent tutorial to get there. After your father, the king, is murdered by magic, you're blamed for a crime you didn't commit, much like the A-Team, left for dead after your ship is sunk by the navy and forced into a life of piracy. Then you go on an epic quest to clear your name and that's pretty much the crux of the story nothing too involved, but it did in some ways remind me of that classic JRPG story, an unlikely hero fallen from grace and forced into a situation where they must save the day. And you know what? I enjoyed it. It's simple, but effective. Now as for most of the game's dialogue, it's delivered in text format with a picture of a person who's speaking. And I think it worked, to be honest. I don't think it would have been massively improved with voiceovers or some kind of movie. One thing I have to say is the side quests weren't overly involved and they were usually used to get new items, gain experience and earn gold. And they were pretty much limited to either delivering something or, a sinking, an or sinking another ship, which wasn't really as varied as I'd have liked. But luckily due to the combat and movement being pretty gratifying, something I'll talk about in the next section, I, I didn't mind that too much but I maybe would have liked a little bit more creativity. The last thing I have to say in terms of story is that there are three factions, pirates, navy, and merchants. Pirates are your allies, and they help you sink a ship when you get into combat. Navy are the enemy, and merchants in green are neutral, but you can sink them if you want to, to get what their ship holds. So all in all, while the story wasn't too much to write home about, it worked. And it had that classic JRPG vibe in a way. But now let's crack on with step three, the gameplay and mechanics. As I said, you play pretty much the entire game as the ship, other than the occasional text screens on land. The movement and combat of the ship is pretty fun. The speed of the ship is governed by how many of the three sails you have opened combined with the direction of the wind. For example, sailing into the wind will slow you down considerably. But I have to say, I really enjoyed exploring the map and it proved to be fun and that was probably also down to the combat. Standard combat allows you to choose one of three cannon shot types, which will attack different areas of an opponent's boat, for example, sails, hull, or crew. And that has an impact, so shooting down sails on your enemy will slow them down. Most of the time, I just found it easier to keep going round and round them trying to sink them, but it was enjoyable. However, I do have to say there were two major quality of life issues related to the ship. 
one. I found it pretty tough at first to know exactly what I was firing and why I was firing it. It seemed a bit pointless and tacked on when I could just go for the hull, which was the only thing that really sank them. But I think the combat was saved by the inclusion of magical powers because if it had just been down to cannon, I think this game would have been pretty boring. So you can collect all manner of magical powers like a boost that left a damaging trail of fire behind you or the ability to stop ships around you from using their weapons. Now these powers did add something to the experience and it stopped that combat from getting too repetitive. But my major bugbear was the camera. It was totally fixed. Just adding a movable camera would have improved the experience no end and simply allowing me to move the camera would have given me more fluidity and enjoyment of the game and I would have felt much more in control. And if I have to say anything else about the combat it would be the AI because too many times I would get into combat and sail too far away and the ships would seemingly just forget about me and then I'd have to race back into combat to reinitiate. But all in all in terms of gameplay it did feel satisfying. Other features of the game that I need to talk about was the classic RPG skill tree allowing you to increase things like damage and speed and a host of boating upgrades that could be sold or equipped, some of which took a while to understand what they did. And I have to say that the menu was a little bit difficult to navigate at times, there's a wheel of parts of the ships and it could have been way simpler if they hadn't tried to make it into a wheel. But aside from the inventory and it being a bit clunky to navigate around it, the controls on the whole were pretty intuitive. And one thing that really shone through was the different classes of ships that catered for different styles of play. For example, there was a sloop that was quick and easy to turn but low powered, while some of the bigger ships were slower but much heavier hitting. And going back to that map, before we move on to the next section, I have to say the world was really interesting and there was so much to do aside from the main mission. For example, there were sea monsters to dodge, fishing, trading, which was pretty simple, but more satisfying than Port Royale 4 as it was, even though it was basic, it wasn't the main focus of the game. And later on in the game, turning ports into pirate bases. For it felt like there was such a wealth of things to see and do. And as you're probably getting at this sense, I really enjoyed the world that was created both through the story and the gameplay that delivered. Just allow me to move the camera and I think this game would have been an even greater experience. But that's it in terms of gameplay and mechanics. A fun experience that could have done with a bit of polish, but overall it was enjoyable and balanced. So now let's talk about step four and look at those graphics and audio. Graphically the game has a clean and charming look. It's not award winning, but I enjoyed the perspective, the effects of the sea and the customizable look of the boats. I even liked the drawings of the characters in the ports, but the animations were clear and overall it was pretty satisfying. However, as I go back, not only the menus were a little bit clunky to navigate, but I think they could have been helped with a bit of tidying and simplifying. But overall, the textures and animations were clear and interesting. Now, as for the audio, nice little piratey songs all around, but I did find that they occasionally cut out and I just get sound effects wondering where the tunes had gone. Maybe somebody turned off the radio. But the sound effects were satisfying, especially the cannon firing. Listen to that. Job well done. So, finally, step five, my conclusion. All in all, it's a good little pirate game. It's not going to win awards, and its story isn't going to turn into a movie but overall a really enjoyable ARPG. And if you love something like Sid Meier's Pirates or wanted Port Royale to be a bit more fun, then this is something to look at. Good graphics and audio, but most importantly, fun gameplay, especially in combat. Yeah, and going back, as I said, the men using that camera could have done with a bit of improving. Just making it able to move would have really improved the game. But this is definitely one I had fun with, and if you're desperate for a score, that doesn't mean anything, ask me for a score in the comments below and I will give you a number. But as for this video, all it leaves me to do is say thank you very much for watching and this is Roy McCoy, out.